Hi guys, in this short tip, I'm going to show you how we can take these three text boxes over here, combine them into one vector, and move a cube. Right, so we are going to add three text boxes for each of our X, Y, Z components. So we're going to go to here and do UI, add, and then we are going to add an input field for each of these. And scroll out. And here is our, whoops. Oh dear. Pressing all the wrong buttons today. Uh, okay. So this is going to be for our X. I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to put that for our Y. I'm going to duplicate that and put that for our Z. I'm also going to add a text part that I am going to align to the center. And I'm going to call this one X. And again, I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one Y. And duplicate that and I'm going to call this one Z and I'm going to color these so that we can actually see them so we're going to make them white and in our game that's going to look like that so for our text we're just going to leave these as well actually we're going to leave them as default values so uh, inside here, uh, what are we going to do? So for each of these input fields, we have to make sure that they are numbers. So the content type is going to be a decimal number because we want to include fractions because it's going to be an X, Y, Z for our vector. And uh, the text the placeholder text we need to change as well. So I'm going to change the placeholder to say zero instead of input text. So when they type in something, so when I run the program now, um, Unity does all the sort of hard work behind the scenes. Tell you why it's not working because these are rendering above everything. So I'm going to move them to here. And now I can click inside here. So if I try and type in uh, a, a letter, it won't let me. So these are going to default to zero. And the nice thing is that, that it's going to we're also going to get like a changed value as well. So uh, unless of course we explicitly delete something there. So, uh, okay. That is us done for the UI. Uh, so yeah, the lesson there is make sure that that is in the right order. So everything that comes, uh, everything that's listed after this and in, in the, so from the top is the further back in the Z order. And then the further forward you are, then the f closer it is to the user. Okay. Um, and for this one, we're going to have another text box uh, that's just going to output the value uh, inside here. So we're going to create another UI element. And this is text. So we're just going to leave this one down here. And this is going to obviously be white as well. Yeah, we can make it yellow. What the heck? Make it yellow. And we'll send that there. So this is where our vector value here. So this is going to change whenever we click on it. And we add one more thing, which is our button. So we're going to add a button here. So our button is going to be the one that actually sets the value. So we're going to say accept, whatever that value is. So that's our accept value there. Now we need something to move. Well, let's save this scene first of all. So 
going to create a new folder called scenes. And we're going to call this one move cube. And our we're going to create a blank object, 3D object, which is going to be a cube. So our game is going to look like nothing. <laughs> Uh, so if I go to my scene, uh, where's my cube? Okay, my cube is at zero, zero, zero. My camera is also at zero, 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 but it is orthographic, so I'm gonna make that perspective. And I am going to put this into 3D mode just now. And currently the camera is not pointing where I think it should be. Where is my camera? Let's zoom out. So my camera is pointing away over there. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, because it's inside here. Okay, let's move this to the outside world. Okay, so the cube is actually at six wherever that is. So if I move that to zero, 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 and then move it out just a little bit, we should see it, oh, move it far too far out. So we'll put, put it in a bit further, a bit closer. Maybe we'll just leave it at zero, zero, zero. There you go, that's closer. Okay, nothing spectacular there. And we can add a light as well, so we can do, um, add a light, so add a directional light. Um, yeah, so whatever. And maybe add a bit of rotation to cube to kind of um, give it a bit of bit of color. There we go. So that's that there. So at least we'll be able to see what, what happens. Okay, and now I'm gonna create a blank game object here called cube mover. And cube mover is going to have a click event here, but we also need access to our input fields here. So I'm going to add a new script. Um, so I'm going to create a new folder called scripts, and I'm going to call this one cube mover. And I'm going to drag and drop that over the top of our game object over here. And so now our game object has our cube mover. And I'm going to start this project up in Visual Studio. So our cube mover has to have uh, input fields, which is our X and our Y and our Z. And we will... Why is that? Not letting us do that. Pretty sure it's in UI. Oh, because I had a small letter I there. Watch your spelling there, kids. Okay, and I just need a public function, uh, actually. No, I need one more. Uh, I need to be able to have the cube that I can control. So public game object uh, cube. But seeing as how we don't actually want the cube, we just want the transform, we can actually just use the transform itself. So the cube transform is there. And then finally we want a method called accept click. And all accept click does is tells us that we've entered something valid. Um, we don't need to do that. I mean, we can have it on when the text changes, but we'll, we'll do it on the accept click here. Okay, um, so on accept click, we would do vector three, and we'll just call this temporary vector three, and we'll do temp.x equals, and then we're going to do convert, uh, which is actually in the system namespace convert to a single, I'll get this right eventually, 
and the value we want is x dot text. And then we do the same thing for our y and our z. Now that we have that, we can then just do cube.position equals temp. That's it. So that's our cube mover. So we have our input fields that reference the x, y, z input fields that we have at the, on the, the main page. We have our transform here, which references our cube object. And then we have our um, accept event here. Now we need to wire that event up. So if I go back to my scene and just do a quick, to do a quick jump actually, select the, the object you want there, click here, just, just above this line, and then press F and it takes you straight to there. And we want to add our on click event. So just click the plus button here select the object we want, and in our case we want cube mover, so that's this object here, and we also want the script called cube mover as well, uh, so we choose cube mover and then accept click. So now we can, we can enter our values here, so we can choose um, five along on the right, and then zero for the y and z, so when we click on accept, we get a null reference there. And the reason why we get a null reference is because I keep forgetting every single time we do this to actually drag and drop things over onto here. So that's what we did just now. So I'm gonna drag this input field onto X and this one onto Y and this one onto Z. Now this is where you should actually name your things. So you can call this X element Y element Z element. And you'll see that the cube mover names them that correctly because it's a it's an internal reference, so it's a good thing there. And then we're gonna drag our cube up to here. And now when we run it, uh, let's move it five to the right so it should move that way along the screen. Yeah, should move that way along the screen where you are. Uh, it's weird because I'm kind of mirrored, but it should be the same direction. So if I click on accept, uh, nothing happens because um, I think I've got this wrong here. Let me just check. Yeah, there you go. We need to do a couple of things here. So this text is blank for these two. So. Um, we can do this over two lines, but I'm going I'm to do it in one line. I'm going to use the ternary operator. So I'm just going to say, if the string is null or empty, put in zero, otherwise put in the value there. And I'll do the same thing for here as well. XYZ, XYZ, okay, so if it's null or it's empty, then we put in a zero. Um, and if it's not zero, then we're gonna use whatever the value is they've typed in there. Because Unity handles all the validation, it's gonna be a valid number that goes in there. So now I should be able to change, so let's make it move up. We'll move up on the, the Y. So I'll choose five for there. These are defaulted to zero. So when I click on accept, this should move the cube up. And it has done that. We haven't done anything with this value over here. So let's sort that out. So we need another um, vector out, we'll call this. And then we will say vector out dot text equals temp dot string. 
so we'll output that there. Uh, so that's our public field, and that's where we set that value. So we really have to drag our text field, which I think is this one. No. It's one of these. Here we go. So this is our output field. So I'll call that output field so we know which one it is. And I just drag and drop that across to output field here. And now, let's try that again, smaller number this time. We'll click on accept, and you see that we now have that value across there. So you see that Unity has formatted it quite neatly with the, the X, the Y, and the, the Z components. So yeah, that's how you can take your three input boxes and make a vector out of it.